It was a moonlit night, the kind that casts an eerie glow over the world. I was driving along a desolate stretch of highway, far from any signs of civilization. The road seemed to stretch on forever, surrounded by vast fields that appeared strangely lifeless in the pale moonlight. As I navigated the dark road, an overwhelming feeling of unease washed over me. It was as if an invisible presence was lingering nearby, watching my every move, but I shrugged it off, attributing the sensation to fatigue and the isolation of the lonely road. Just when I thought I had conquered my fears, the engine sputtered, and my truck came to a grinding halt. Panic surged through me, and I tried restarting the engine, but it refused to cooperate. Stranded in the middle of nowhere, I reached for my phone, only to find that I had no signal. Feeling helpless, I decided to step out and see if I could identify the issue. As soon as my feet touched the ground, an icy breeze enveloped me, even though it wasn't a particularly cold night. The air was heavy with an eerie silence, and I knew in my gut that something was dreadfully wrong. Suddenly, I heard a distant sound, a soft, haunting melody that sent chills down my spine. I strained my ears to pinpoint the source of the ethereal tune, and that's when I saw her. A young girl, no older than ten, stood at the edge of the road, her figure illuminated by the moonlight. She wore a white dress that seemed out of place in the darkness. Her hair was long and jet black, and her eyes glowed with an otherworldly light. Fear and curiosity battled within me, but against my better judgment, I called out to her, asking if she needed help. The girl simply stared at me, her expression blank yet somehow filled with sorrow. As I took a step closer, the melody grew louder, but something was off. There was no music playing anywhere. It was as if the haunting tune was emanating from the girl herself. Mesmerized and unnerved, I asked her once more if she needed assistance, but this time she spoke in a voice that seemed to echo from a distant void. Help me find my way home, she pleaded, her words chilling me to the bone. Before I could respond, she turned and started walking away, her bare feet making no sound on the pavement. Compelled to follow her, I did so, my truck forgotten for the moment. As we walked further into the darkness, the fields seemed to transform, taking on an eerie glow of their own. My heart raced and I wanted to turn back, but an irresistible force urged me onward. Then, in the distance, I saw a faint light, the silhouette of an old farmhouse. The girl walked towards it, and with each step, the melody grew louder and more haunting. It was as if the music itself was leading us to this ominous place. As we approached the house, I felt an overwhelming sense of dread, but I couldn't stop myself. The girl disappeared inside, and against all logic I followed her in. The interior of the farmhouse was decrepit and filled with shadows. The haunting melody now surrounded me, echoing off the walls, and the air was thick with an indescribable heaviness. Suddenly, the girl stopped, and the melody ceased. She turned to face me, and her eyes bore into my soul. In a voice that sounded both ancient and childlike, she whispered, You should not have come. Before I could comprehend her words, a bone-chilling scream filled the air, echoing through the house and reverberating in my mind. The girl's form twisted and contorted before my eyes, morphing into something grotesque and monstrous. Terrified, I turned and ran, fleeing the haunted farmhouse as fast as my legs could carry me. I didn't look back until I reached my truck, and with trembling hands I managed to restart the engine. As I drove away from that nightmarish place, I couldn't shake the image of the girl's transformed face or the haunting melody that seemed to follow me even as I left the forsaken farmhouse far behind. I never found out who or what that girl was, but one thing is certain. That night I encountered something truly otherworldly and terrifying. So take heed, my friends, and be wary of the darkness that lurks beyond the glow of the moon, for you never know what haunting secrets may be waiting to ensnare you on the desolate roads of the night. A pitch black night, the road stretching out like an endless abyss ahead of me and my truck rumbling through the darkness. I was on a lonesome highway, far away from any signs of civilization. The wind howled outside, and the sound of my engine was the only thing keeping me company. But as I drove deeper into the night, an eerie feeling crept over me, like someone or something was watching from the shadows. Suddenly, up ahead, I saw a dim light flickering in the distance. It was a rundown gas station, but something about it felt off. I needed to fuel up so I cautiously pulled in. The place was deserted, 
and there wasn't a soul in sight. As I pumped gas, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Every little noise sent shivers down my spine. Just when I was about to get back into the truck, I heard a faint whisper, like a distant echo. My heart skipped a beat, and I looked around, but there was no one there. With trembling hands, I jumped back into the truck and hit the gas. But as I pulled away, I caught a glimpse of something in my rearview mirror. There, standing in the shadows, was a figure. It looked like a person, but its eyes gleamed with an unnatural light, and its smile was wickedly twisted. I sped up, but no matter how fast I went, the figure seemed to keep pace with me. Panic set in as I realized I couldn't escape whatever it was. The road ahead seemed to stretch on forever, and the darkness outside felt suffocating. Desperate to get away, I made a snap decision and took a side road, hoping to lose the sinister presence. But the road seemed to lead me deeper into a thick forest, and the trees loomed like gnarled claws in the moonlight. Just when I thought I'd lost the figure, it appeared right in front of me, standing in the middle of the road. I slammed on the brakes, but it was too late. The truck skidded, and I crashed into the figure, sending it flying into the darkness. Terrified, I got out of the truck to check, but there was no trace of the figure, no sign of impact. It was as if it had vanished into thin air. I didn't waste another second. I hightailed it out of there, driving like a man possessed until I reached a bustling town. I parked the truck and took deep breaths, trying to calm my pounding heart. I still have no explanation for what happened that night. Was it a ghost? A demon? I'll never know for sure, but one thing's for certain. I'll never forget that spine-chilling encounter on the dark, desolate roads. Don't go anywhere because I have another story to share with you. It was a stormy night, rain pouring down like a relentless torrent. I was driving through a dense forest, taking a shortcut to reach my destination faster. The road was narrow, winding, and flanked by towering trees that seemed to whisper secrets in the wind. As the rain splattered against my windshield, the sound of the downpour drowned out everything else. But amidst the drumming rain, I thought I heard something else. A faint, mournful cry. I shook it off as a trick of the weather, but the feeling of unease persisted. Suddenly, my headlights caught a glimpse of movement ahead. I squinted through the rain-smeared glass and saw a figure stumbling on the side of the road. My heart skipped a beat, and I pulled over, feeling a sense of duty to help whoever it was out there in the storm. I grabbed my flashlight and stepped out of the truck. The rain soaked me to the bone in seconds, but I pressed on, trying to find the person who needed help. I called out, but there was no response, only the haunting echoes of my own voice in the forest. As I ventured further into the darkness, I stumbled upon an old abandoned house. It looked decrepit, as if it had been standing there for centuries, forgotten by time. But what sent a chill down my spine was the fact that the cry seemed to be coming from inside that eerie dwelling. Against my better judgment, I approached the house. The creaking of the wooden floorboards beneath my feet sounded like whispers from the past. I called out once more, and this time I heard a faint reply, a trembling voice begging for help. Pushing open the door, I entered cautiously, my heart pounding loudly in my ears. The inside was pitch black and I could barely see a thing. My flashlight beam revealed old, rotting furniture covered in cobwebs, adding to the sense of dread that enveloped me. Following the voice, I ascended a rickety staircase, every step creaking like a scream of warning. On the upper floor, I found a small, dimly lit room, and there, in the corner, huddled a figure that sent shivers down my spine. It was a young girl, her clothes torn and soaked from the rain. Her eyes were wide with fear, and she clutched onto an old doll as if it were her only lifeline. She told me she had lost her way in the storm and had sought shelter in the abandoned house, only to find herself trapped, as I tried to comfort her and lead her back outside. To this day, I don't know who or what that girl really was or what was lurking in that forsaken house. Thanks for watching. All right, here's another chilling truck driving tale that'll send shivers down your spine. I was on a long haul journey transporting goods across the country. It was a moonless night and the darkness seemed to swallow the road behind me as I moved forward. The only source of light was my truck's headlights, cutting through the night like a lonely beacon. I had heard rumors about a haunted stretch of highway, but I brushed them off as mere campfire stories. However, as I approached that ominous road, 
a strange feeling washed over me, like an icy hand gripping my heart. Ignoring my unease, I pushed on, determined to meet my delivery deadline. The further I drove, the more the atmosphere seemed to change. The air grew colder and the usual sounds of the road faded into an eerie silence. A dense fog began to creep in, reducing visibility to almost nothing. Suddenly, my headlights caught something up ahead, a figure standing in the middle of the road. I slammed on the brakes, heart pounding in my chest, and watched as the figure slowly turned to face me. It was a woman, dressed in tattered clothes, and her eyes seemed to reflect the pale light like those of a lost soul. Feeling a mix of fear and concern, I rolled down my window and called out to her, asking if she needed help. But she remained silent, her expression hauntingly empty. I knew I should drive away, but a strange compulsion held me in place. Without warning, the woman started moving towards me, her gait unnatural and jerky. Panic surged through me, and I finally found the strength to hit the gas and speed away. But as I looked in my rearview mirror, my heart nearly stopped. The woman was now standing in the distance, but there was something horribly wrong. She was no longer alone. A group of shadowy figures stood beside her, their eyes glinting in the darkness, and they seemed to be floating above the ground. I pushed my truck to its limits desperate to escape this nightmarish scene. The fog seemed to thicken, and I felt like I was driving through a surreal dream. The figures kept appearing in my mirrors, now closer, now farther away, but always watching. I finally reached the end of that cursed stretch of road, and the fog lifted as quickly as it had come. I pulled over, gasping for breath, and trying to make sense of what I had just experienced. But even in the safety of daylight, the memory of those ghostly figures haunted me. From that day on, I avoided that haunted highway like the plague, warning fellow truckers to steer clear of its malevolent grasp. Whether it was a ghostly encounter or a product of my imagination, I'll never know. But I can't shake the feeling that something otherworldly lurked in the darkness that night. So if you ever find yourself driving alone on a...